let's get serious here. So let's talk about this thing. I know I might be biased, but this is a pretty cool little device. I mean, it's the size of a camera cape, but it holds half a kilowatt hour worth of energy. It can power 300 watts, pure sign. It uses to charge, to run a fan, charge my laptop, and then have a couple of these lights on. Took and tested uh, at a car show, and, it, and we had it on for hours. It lit up, you know, like four light bulbs for six hours, and it only used up, up like 30% of the battery, right? So this thing, it's actually pretty, amazing if you want to learn about electronics and you want to get your hands dirty and build this this thing is the perfect solution now if you want to deploy this in a disaster zone eh, not so good right if you just need to be able to have lights tonight it wouldn't rate very good for those same reasons that it's uh, difficult to, to put together even though it's, it has very cool features and lacks on the ones that have to be five out of five for a disaster zone so for that reason i'm going to show you how to make that device today Boom. You see this right here? This is a Triplite Smart 1500 uh, UPS. This is a thing that you connect to the wall and then you connect everything else and then you connect your computer and anything else you want to be protected right from interruption here. These are very popular. I know that people that use PCs and they don't want to lose their work, they, they usually do it. These come from hospitals. They have to have sensitive equipment on that could not just turn off. Whenever the batteries go bad, then they just replace them. And then these end up at a recycler. There's pallets and pallets of these guys and there's nothing wrong with it other than they don't have a battery. So, so the super weird thing about these is that they operate with three lead acid batteries, which makes them a 36 volt device. And that's a bit strange because there are not too many of these devices that run at 36 volts. Now, if we could only have access to 36 volt batteries, hmm, it just so happens that I have a friend that I met in the internet, his name is Tom, and he has truckloads and truckloads and a warehouse full of these 36 volt batteries. They have a built-in BMS. I made videos about this before. Go watch them or whatever. This used to be part of a hoverboard. I've used them here to make a power wall for my house. That's been by far the easiest power wall to build because basically you just connect them. You just connect this to the thing and then you're done. These are good quality batteries. Okay, you're gonna have to buy a UPS, right? For 30 bucks following this link that I'm gonna give you. You're gonna need one of these charge controllers, four of these uh, XT60Ys. You're gonna need five of these batteries. Well, you only need four, right? But the seller sells them at five. So you'll keep one as a backup and some, you know, just decently sized wire like this uh, 12 gauge here. All right, start by taking the cover, the battery cover off. You have to remove two screws here. Then you have these wires on the inside. You will cut those spade connectors off, peel them back. With that done, get to the batteries and you slide them. Use one of the Ys to connect the two batteries together. Two more batteries. All right, use another Y. When you have two, you use another Y to connect the, the end of those two Ys. And there we go. This one connector here has all four of those batteries. You, you take the fourth Y like this, and then you cut it right here. Okay, take the back, right? Right where the two screws, that's, that's the side that you'll use to put this in here. Mark it somehow, all right? I'm only gonna use two. You drill some holes. You use any kind of screws, as long as they fit through the hole that you just drilled. I don't even have nuts, I'm using these little standoffs. Get a bigger drill bit. It passed uh, cables right through those holes that you just made. I have to cut about half of this cable just to be able to fit it on these little crappy things. This charge controller has really crappy terminals there, so you have to get creative. All right, here we go. After much <laughs> fondling around with it, finally got it. So cross those to the inside, take one of these. This is the part where you do the only soldering in this project. Okay. All right. All 
right, now use electrical tape. Now you connect this thing to this thing. Ooh, that's a little spark because it basically it charged the caps in this guy. There we go. Stuff these cables in there. All right, now you just cover this up. You put the screws back on. Then this cord right here, I mean, you choose what to do with it. You can leave it on. You can actually charge the batteries if you plug it in. If, if you have access to, you know, 120 volts of the grid, if you have access to the grid, you can use this one to plug it in. But if you don't and it gets in the way, you just cut it off. But this guy should turn on now. There we go. All right, this guy's running for the first time. Uh, you'll have to press that button. Come on. To silence the alarm. Do we have power? Let's see. We sure do. This thing's got power. Okay, last step is to put these MC4 connectors in a cable. This one is the positive. All right, here we go. All righty, now the last step is to connect it. Charge controller here. So there you have it, 600 watt hours of energy storage, 900 watts of power, six outlets. Looking down at the list of all the materials, it looks like it comes in at just over $400. But this includes everything, including the lights and the 100 watts of flexible solar panel. So this system is pretty much ready to deploy. It is a lot easier to put together. You can do this in a couple of hours. The level of difficulty to build this thing is a lot less. Price is lower. The parts count is lower. It is a win-win. So let's make a bunch of these and send them to the island for people that need them. Uh, I ran out of time to do the setup on the solar charge controller, but I will link the best video that I found to be able to go through the menus and setup of, these, of this particular solar charge controller. Day two. Morning, guys. Good morning. All right. What are we doing? No paparazzi. All right, guys. This is day two of the shoot with the Vice team, right? Their motherboard. They're going to do a thing on the future of energy. And the bus is in it, and I'm in it. And right now, we do a little bit of driving and stuff. And so we're pulled up here, getting ready. Using the fancy equipment. Here's our director. <laughs> He's a little busy right now, but these are the director, you know? Yeah, and the fancy rig. Unlike me, their footage is not gonna be shaky, so you guys don't have to complain about it, you know? Yeah, showtime. Oh yeah, I gotta close this one too. Full production team in the bus. Five, six, Look at that. Making use of that uh, sunroof there. What's going on here, j -Hu? We're just driving. What's happening in the back of your van? Oh, there's a bunch of dudes back here. Looks like we're going nowhere. Are we there yet? Uh. <laughs> Not quite. How far away are we? The crew is distracted over here at EV West. Dude, happening? these guys are losing their minds because these cars are so cool. I can't get anything done. <laughs> I'm charging at a rate of 96 amps, almost 100, right? So it's like 30 miles per hour. It's pretty good. But in order to do that, I have to use two chargers. Here's my five kilowatt charger. And then here's our PF50. Yeah, cool. Technology will transform the world. 
For our batteries, make them torture them from time to time. Oh, it's good, you got it. Yeah, torture batteries. Do not try this at home. For science purposes, we are going to destroy lithium battery. Pretty boring. Batteries, lithium batteries are pretty safe. Pull it up or down. Go for it! Okay, we're not gonna do anything too crazy. <laughs> 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 <laughs>